everyone. Thanks a lot for dialing in to M365 May. I'm Alice and we've got Christian here as well. And we're both really excited to present to you today. So just um, quickly before we dive in, a word about the co Code of Conduct. Um, we've got the chat and the Q&A channel open. Um, so please, any questions as you go, please write in the um, Q&A. But please be constructive and um, respectful as well. And it's also important to acknowledge the traditional owners, especially from today being National Sorry Day. So Alice and I are both presenting here in Melbourne. Um, so we'd just like to acknowledge the people of the Kulin Nation and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So today we're going to be talking about the power of prototypes and how you can shape your data story in Power BI. Before we begin, um, a little bit about myself. My name's Alice Drummond. I'm a Microsoft MVP for the data platform and also co-founder of Discovery AI. And a little bit about myself. I love camping, hiking, and um, exploring nature. And my name's Christian. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer in BI reporting. Like Alice, I'm also co-founder of Discovery AI. And as you can see from my fun fact, I love the AFL and I'm quite passionate and excited for it to be starting again in two weeks time. So what we're all here today to hear about is really the power of prototypes and how you can um, use prototypes to help shape your data story in Power BI. So today we'll be walking you through um, five key steps to develop your prototype really quickly. The first one is to start with a sketch to capture the core business requirements. We'll then show you how you can um, develop your prototype using a subset of your data. Then um, give tips and tricks to help you lay out and style your report, collect feedback and refine your report really quickly, and different tools to help you share, collaborate and iterate on your reports. So power, um, the prototypes are really powerful for both the end users and also the data analysts. So the way that we want to present today is we come in two perspectives. So I'll be taking on the role as the end user or the business user, where from this particular Power BI project, I want to get some greater ownership, be able to expand in ideas and understand the workflow and tools. And we'll show you how developing a prototype can allow me as the end user to be able to achieve these. And from the analyst perspective, we get a much stronger appreciation of the business requirements. We reduce the amount of rework and also we have a much greater shared understanding of the data to allow us to move into the production phase. And so we'll show once you get a Power BI report that you're happy with, you can push it into production and then look to really scale it out across to your entire organization and really help it meet its end goal, which is to be used to inform decision making. So before we begin, what is Power BI for those of you who aren't familiar with it? Power BI, it's a business intelligence tool which allows us to collate and transform huge volumes of information into a centralized database, which we can use to create interactive reports, which can be published online to the web, which we can then share with our project team and our stakeholders. And it has a really nice workflow so we can update our reports whenever the data changes. But these can be quite confusing when um, you're trying to use tools such as Power BI with other users within your organization who aren't too familiar with them. So as I said, this will be a bit of a Q&A between Alice and myself. So from my perspective as the business user, I'm a water engineer that works at Waterworks. And to do my job, I need to understand data from many different departments across the business. But at this particular stage, I don't really know Power BI and I have a lot of data that I'm not really sure how to analyze, visualize and communicate. And so this is where I work with Alice. So in this scenario, I'm actually a business analyst who develops the Power BI reports for different departments across my organization. I'm looking at um, collecting report requirements and then creating the reports to meet the brief. But often people aren't that happy or they're not that engaged with the dashboards and reports that I create. And I find myself working overtime. I think I've got a really good understanding of what Christian wants to see in his report, but it turns out that I'm wrong and I don't know as much as what I thought I did. So this situation might resonate with some people dialing in on the call, but before we jump into the prototype, it's important to understand what our scenario is. So my problem is this. We've conducted a survey and we've gathered information from the community across wider Melbourne on what they value about the waterways that we're trying to manage and maintain. And so what I want to see from this data is how we can use it to answer these questions. So I want to know how satisfied the community are on average with the different waterways. What is the profile of the people providing responses? 
what do our customers value in terms of different categories of waterways and also how can we improve our services on the back of this information but it's not just understanding this, these results as a whole. I need to know how these results vary across different regions and postcodes. And I work in one particular team of Waterworks, but there's other people in different departments that have their own data that need to be presented. So this is what we really need to combine together to create a decision support tool using Power BI. So what I would tend to do is I would go and have a chat with Christian. He would give me all of this information, usually in Excel or SQL Server databases. And then I would go away. I'd take my time. I'd unpack the data. I'd analyze, transform, clean and shape it. And I would do the majority of this within Power BI. And then at the end of the project, I'd end up with this amazing looking report, which I think that I'd fulfilled all of the requirements that Christian and the other business users across the organization were asking for. And then when I get to my big show and tell at the meeting, everyone's a bit confused. People are start to question the data. They're like, oh, I didn't think it would say this, or that's not what I said. And we're back to square one, back to the drawing board. So on this project, I wanna try a different approach this time. I'm going to work together with Christian to build a Power BI prototype, take Christian along the journey to try and streamline the development and reduce the amount of rework at the end of the project. But then also what I want to do is try to improve Christian's data literacy so he understands exactly what I'm talking about. But also from my perspective, I really want to kind of get inside his brain and understand what it is he's trying to show with his data. So let's begin. I'm excited. Yeah, no, this is fun. So we're going to work together. The first step is to start with a sketch. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to head straight inside of Power BI. So this is a blank Power BI canvas. I've got nothing underneath the covers. Let's get started collecting our requirements. So to do this, I'm just going to insert a blank text box here. And Christian, can you tell me um, what's the core focus of your study? So the survey information we've got is all about community waterway values. Community waterway values. Perfect. And what business question are you trying to answer here? Yeah, so it's information from a whole different range of areas, but the key is we want to understand what does our community value most? So what does, does our, our community value, value most? most? when it comes to waterway management. Perfect, so this is the key business question that you're trying to answer. So let's put it front and center here. I'm just gonna bold the title and let's make this text box stand out. So I'm gonna add a shadow to it. So our first shadow, tip, cool. yeah, the shadows are a new feature in Power BI that just got released um, a couple of, maybe a week ago. I'm pretty excited about them. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to put our um, key information front and center. We really want to understand what this report will be all about, and we want to put the business question at the top of the page. So Christian, what else? Let's unpack this a bit further. What other um, core requirements do you have of this project? Yeah, so there's a bit of interesting information, but the main sort of question that we want to answer is what's the average community satisfaction score? Satisfaction score across the different regions. Across the different regions, perfect. And so when you're talking about the regions, what do you mean there? Where's our data coming so from? So it's mostly spatial information. So we have different regions across Melbourne where information's mm -hmm. come from, and we've also got postcode specific um, information as well. So I'm thinking probably a map yep. would visualize this quite nicely. Makes sense. Perfect. So what other um, business questions are you trying to yeah, answer? Yeah, another key element is part of the survey was to get information about individual categories. So people valuing sustainability, water quality, recreation. So I really want to know what do our customers value? So what do our customers value? Yeah. And so you mentioned categories. So we want to have a look at the count by categories yeah. maybe? different community responses, so the count's good. Fantastic, and how do we want to interact with this data? If we've got the ability to filter by region, that would be a really powerful tool. Okay, so I'm just going to put, let's put a slicer up here. As an analyst, I'm not the best speller. <laughs> and we want to slice by the region. 
Perfect. So this is kind of starting to take shape. What's your hero visual? What's the most important thing in your study, Christian? So understanding the spatial context of where information has come from. So the map would be the hero the visual. Map. In this okay, case. perfect. Well, let's make that a little bit bigger. It's really important to understand what your hero visual is um, so that we can build our report and all of our other visuals around it. So let's make that one stand out. Did you have any other um, key business requirements here? Any other questions that you wanted answered? Not really for me. This is the main sort of information, but I'm going to be showing this Power BI report to other people in different departments. So they might have different requirements from their end of how we can bring more of this data in here and tell that story. OK, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a couple of placeholders. So placeholders are really great to include when you're developing prototypes because it's a bit of a memory jogger. It shows us that we have more space on our canvas, but it still um, promotes idea generation and um, it kind of opens up discussion. It doesn't close our brains off to um, what we want to show. It keeps it really creative. Yes, it's good. Gives us a bit of room to move if we want more info. Exactly. So in just about um, five minutes, we've got our business requirements down on a page and we've started with our sketch. So we've banished the blank page. We've translated our business questions into a sketch and it's a really effective way of capturing the key requirements. And so me as the business or the end user, I can already see this report taking shape and I'm starting to get a bit more familiarity with Power BI as I'm working alongside Alice building up this report. And from my perspective as the analyst, I can already develop the basic report of this skeleton and we can start collecting the data and start to populate some of our visuals. So let's move to the second step of our process, which is using a subset of our data. So what we want to do here is we want to import um, our data into Power BI so we can start playing around with it. But we have to be really careful here. We don't want to import all of our data into Power BI as once at once because then we run the risk of getting kind of bogged down in the detail and wanting to um, have a look too deep at the data. But it also would signify to Christian that, yeah, we're really moving through this project really quickly um, and he might get a false sense of security of how long it takes to analyze our information. Yeah, it sounds good. So let's start importing our data. So I'm going to get some data. Christian's provided me with a really um, yeah, Pretty so all of, all of our data has been captured and brought together in um, Excel table ranges. So if we bring some of them in and start to have a look at it. Perfect. So I've just connected up to my Excel file. Here you can see that we so can navigate. We the demographics, probably the key value keywords and also the postcodes at the bottom. Perfect. That's the important so I'm not going to import the rest of the information. Let's just quickly have a look at this data. So we're connecting up to our um, to our Excel file here. And we're heading across to the Power Query. So this is the part of Power BI where um, you can transform and shape your information. So you can see that we've got information on um, our locations here. I'm just going to change the data type. You can do lots of different transformations, um, but we're not going to really do any here. We're going to keep it um, really simple at this stage because we're at the prototype phase. Cool, sounds good. So let's bring this in and um, start building our data model. So what we're doing here is we're importing our data into Power BI um, from Excel. It's loading it and we're actually creating, automatically creating a data model. So if we go into the model view here, you can see that we have a really simple um, model of our information and this is perfect for building prototypes. So let's get started. The first visual we want to try and replace here is this map. I'm going to keep the title, but let's insert a map visual. So here you can see we've got a map on our page. Yeah, so we got our latitude and longitude about different areas. Let's bring in our latitude and our longitude. And how do we want to symbolize these? Do you want to see um, the customer satisfaction index? Yeah, probably based on size. Perfect. So let's have a look at this. We probably want the average customer um, satisfaction index. Yeah, it's looking good. So very quickly, we've got our data into Power BI and we have a map developed. So let's have a look at this one next. What do our customers value? 
Yeah, so we've got different scores coming in um, across the different categories. So I think showing that as a bar chart would be pretty powerful. Perfect. So let's do the count of our surveys as our values. Make sure that's a count. And then we wanted to break this up into the categories you said. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Perfect. So this is looking um, this is looking pretty good. And we've also got a slicer here. So we wanted to insert a slicer by the region. So here we've got a slicer. Yeah, so we've got three key regions. We've got the Eastern District, the Southern District and the Western District across Melbourne. Fantastic. So let's put this up here. So because you've only got three regions, we could actually represent this. This might be a bit nicer if we do it horizontally. Mm -hmm rather than vertically, just so we can see it a little bit better. Perfect, so let's just um, resize this because I've just realized we've got a placeholder here as well. And this is starting to take shape. We've um, really quickly created a report with a subset of our data. So let's see where we've come from. So we can really kind of start to see the big picture. Working with a small data set, it makes our model much faster and it's much simpler for us to wrap our heads around. But also more importantly, from our perspective as data analysts, is using subsets shows Christian and our business users that we aren't finished. A danger of developing prototypes is that the end user can have an unrealistic expectation of how fast we can develop these tools. So the next step is to really lay out and style our reports. Yeah, so this is looking pretty good. The data seems to be in there and I can interact it with the way that I want. But if I'm going to show this to other people across different departments, it needs to have a little bit more of a consistent branding and a theme to it across our organisation. Yeah, exactly. You can see that these um, visuals are kind of floating around in space. They don't really have any structure. We're not sure exactly where to look. And it's kind of plain, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty plain. Perfect, so we're gonna do two things here. We're going to lay out our report um, by providing a really nice base using a background. And then we're also going to import our corporate color theme and kind of style into Power BI to give it a sense of familiarity to Christian and other people across his organization um, so that it's something they can really be proud of and they want to share and they want to show other people. Yeah, it sounds really good. So how do we create this background? So what we can do, this is a bit of a trick here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of our report as is. So I've got a picture here. Let's head over into um, PowerPoint and you can see I've got a couple of different layout options here. I'm going to insert a new slide, delete those ones and paste in our, um, our existing report. So you can see here that what we would like to do is we want to add, um, add a title block, a nice big header up the top to kind of frame where we've got our um, important information and then group our different visuals together, but also make our title stand out. So it's really important um, to take your time and play around with the layout, get the look and feel right, um, because it can add a lot of value to your reports. So I'm just going to start layering some of these shapes on top of each other. And see, we can do it pretty quickly in PowerPoint. Behind Power BI, PowerPoint would have to be one of my favorite tools. Yeah, no, it's looking good. I can understand sort of the benefits of structuring and grouping information together in terms of how that makes it easier for people to interpret and understand the information. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like we should view our Power BI reports as if they're written reports and provide a bit of structure on your page to help you navigate and understand and interpret. Almost like these boxes are um, kind of paragraphs and our top title pane here is like our headings for our report. Okay, cool. So this is actually looking pretty good. Here we've got a really nice background to structure our report. Now all I'm going to do is export this. I'm going to create an image from this PowerPoint slide. So I'm just going to save it just as a normal um, PNG file. And I just want this slide. I don't need all of the slides. So now let's head back over to Power BI. The next step is we want to add this um, 
this uh, image as our background. So I'm just going to add in this PNG file um, that I just created. Going to fit it to my page. And now let's change the transparency so we can see the magic. Ooh. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's already starting to look better. It's looking much better. Let's just fix up some of these, um, some of the formatting options here before we play around with our corporate theme. So here we've got our title. Let's just take off um, some of these options here. I really like to um, to get down into the details of all of the formatting options as well. I find this um, a really fun aspect of Power BI. You can do some great data storytelling here. Um, one more. Let's just change this one. Make it white so it stands out against this really kind of dark background here. And now it's time. So now we've um, added in our layout to help frame our report. Um, but you can see that some of the colors don't really match. Um, and we've got our own kind of corporate styles and templates at Waterworks. Yeah, should we bring those in? Yeah, definitely. So in Power BI, we have the option to um, change up our themes based on um, the style of report we want to create. But we can also browse for more and import our own custom theme. So let's import our own cool. theme here. So you can see that um, it's changed the color slightly. Um, it's changed some of my font and text type. It has also imported lots of these um, borders. So let's just turn those off. And we can see that our report is beginning to take shape. Let's add some backgrounds here so our placeholders stand out. And we'll also put a background on this one too. So let's just rearrange. How, how do you think this is looking, Christian? Yeah, it's done to look pretty good, I think. I've now got that grouping element, the different structure. One quick question. Usually, I think a lot of people would try and do this format and layouts at the end. What do you see as these benefits doing it right now? Well, I think it um, really helps to frame the information and you can start to piece together uh, the story that you want to tell. It's so much easier to look at data um, when it looks nice and it seems a little bit like a finished product because you get a minimum viable product. You get something that you're proud to show around your organization. People aren't going to get distracted with um, heaps of kind of different colors or it doesn't align with what they think um, their report should look like at the end. Yeah, this is great. Cool. Fantastic. So I think that this is actually looking pretty good. We've um, what we've done here is we've created our sketch. We've built on our sketch with our real data. Now we've aligned our report with our company um, themes and layouts. So let's have a look. Head back into the PowerPoint. We've got a lot of things open here um, and see what impact So that from, from my angle, that particular step was really important because now it's quite easy for me to be able to show this report across different departments in the organization and it looks more like a finished product. The company branding um, and people to actually be able to look at this and have familiarity and say, yeah, that's a Waterworks product, much the same as you would sort of template a Microsoft Word report. So we can do similar things here with Power BI, and then it really helps the users get more information of who owns that report at a quick glance. So that was really good. Yeah, fantastic. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, Power BI design, that's one of my favorite topics. So we are halfway through the presentation. Uh, for all the participants on the call, thank you so much for dialing in. We've got um, a competition available now. If everyone gets their, um, their smartphone up and takes a scan of the QR code, then we'll, we'll hold this up for maybe five, ten seconds. Yeah, you have to be pretty quick. So I think um, there's a lot of um, really great sponsors yeah. sponsoring the event. Um, so you don't want to miss out on the prizes. Fantastic. I think that is long enough for everyone. Let's move on. Step four, so feedback and refine. This is a really important step. Once we've um, created a report that looks pretty good, now um, our business users can start to play around with the information and it kind of opens up their eyes to what's possible in Power BI and it sparks some new ideas. Yeah, so this has been a really good intro. Um, not knowing Power BI and now taking it here, but there's a little bit, a few more things that we sort of got to clarify. So with these different postcode locations on the map, 
These are actually defined based on boundaries or polygons. So if there's a way we can bring that in so we can have the defined regions, that would be good. Um, I just realized as well, some of the feedback we got from the surveys were some key words associated with different areas for improvement. So if there's a way to capture that qualitative information, that would be good. And just when I have a quick glance at the Eastern, Southern and Western district slices, each of these districts have their own unique um, icon or image. So let's try and bring that into the filter as well. Yeah, fantastic. So what we've done here is um, we've opened up the conversation for Christian to actually explore the data and provide more info. And in Power BI, it's an amazing storytelling tool. We've got so many visuals available um, to us on the marketplace to try and communicate all sorts of info. So I'm going to add in a couple of custom visuals here. So I've just added in a word cloud. We can use that to visualize the keywords that Christian talked about. Let's also find um, the chiclet slicer. This is one of my favorite custom visuals because it allows you to add images into slices. And one more visual, we need a good visual for the map. So my absolute favorite is Mapbox. So Mapbox allows you some really kind of great flexibility when it comes to mapping. Cool. So let's have a look at this slicer first. I'm gonna convert this to the chiclet slicer. And as I mentioned, we can actually um, bring in images into the chiclet slicer here. So that's one of the great things about the chiclet slicer. We can add in a lot more context to tell what we're slicing on. So let's just resize this so it um, fits a bit better on the page. We'll make our images slightly bigger. Cool. Perfect. So let's just position that up here. So now we can really clearly see our different districts. So the next visual um, that Christian mentioned was he wanted a visual to um, analyze some keywords. And word cloud is an amazing visual for um, just showing kind of representation of um, common words used to describe different things. Perfect for survey based results. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's have a look at the keywords. We want the areas for improvement. And we want to size these by the number of surveys which have been completed. Perfect. So it's looking a little bit, um, it's a bit hard to read. I'm going to turn off the rotate. And what, what, what would you call this visual here, Christian? What's the question we're answering? Uh, it's pretty much asking what are the uh, areas we can improve in? areas we can improve in. Perfect. So lastly, we've got our map here. So what I want to do is I want to convert this map into a map box map because um, that will allow us to represent our postcodes as regions. So starting with map box, we've got a couple of steps to go through. The first thing I want to do here is I'm getting rid of my longitude and latitude. And I'm actually going to bring in my postcode as my location field. Um, so we've already set up our Mapbox account. Uh, if you're new to Mapbox and you want to test it out, uh, we've got a blog on our discoveryi.com blog page, which goes into all everything you need to know about Mapbox 101. So we're going to take a couple of short cuts here. We're going to bring in our access token. I'm going to change my map style. And let's turn this from a circle map into a chloroplast map. So a chloroplast map is just a fancy name for an area map, essentially. Is it no, we're not in Africa? Yeah, so we have to add in our custom data here. So I'm going to bring in um, a custom tile set. So this requires three pieces of information. So the first thing is my map box, um, my map box URL. What we need to do then is copy in our source layer name. And our last piece of information is our attribute name. So this is postcodes. This is the same info we have in our data model. And success, you can see that that now we have our postcodes cool. as regions across Melbourne. It's pretty good, but um, the colors seem to sort of merge in with the backgrounds. Is there a way we can change that? Yeah, exactly. So let's play around with some of the colors here. So a minimum. Minimum value is probably not good feedback. So if we make that a reddish color, it would be good. Maybe make the center as sort of an orange color and then something green related for a really positive survey result about our different waterway values. 
Fantastic. So how is that looking now? Yeah, no, that's looking that's looking considerably better. I think that'll be a lot easier to show people interested in the different districts, how the community is valuing uh, the different waterway elements. So that's cool. Fantastic. So let's save this. We're all happy with this. This is our prototype. So heading back across to our PowerPoint here, you can see that the important step four is getting feedback and refining our report. So from my end, in terms of being able to tell my data story across the organisation, at the start I saw the report starting to take shape, but now being taken along the journey, I can see what's possible in this report. And then I had more ideas because we had a prototype or a staged approach and it made it a lot easier to work with Alice to understand what she was able to do and for her to understand what my requirements were as the business user. Yeah, exactly. So um, getting feedback early is key, especially when you're working with lots of different people across an organisation. So this is great and look, I'm excited to share it with people, but how exactly can I do that? Yeah, so the last step, step five, to share, collaborate and iterate. So when you're developing prototypes, not only are you developing it for your key business user, but it's also a really great use case to share across the organization to kind of show what's possible and to start the different conversations about um, what, what our data is actually about and making data visible across different departments who might also want to be involved in the project. So the last step here is to um, share our prototype with others across the organization. So this could be via like something like a Teams channel, you have a collaboration hub, a portal. We're working in Power BI, so we're really lucky that Power BI has the Power BI service, which provides us with a perfect um, collaboration hub. So what I'm going to do now, if you're happy with this report, Christian, is yeah, let's publish good. this up to the online service. So yeah, we'll save all changes here. And let's select our workspace. So we're presenting at M365 May conference. So why not publish there? <laughs> so what this is doing is it's publishing both our report and our underlying data up to the online service. So let's go have a look at it. So here you can see that we've got our report. It's exactly the same as what we had um, down in the Power BI desktop, but this time it's kind of cloud-based, so it's in, on an easier platform for us to share it. Um, but do you have any other information which might make this um, report a little bit easier for people to understand? Yeah, we have some supporting information, both like in the form of video links and also different documents. So if there's a way to package that up with this Power BI report and give that to other people in different departments, that would be really good. Is there a way to do that in Power BI? Of course there is. So uh, we can create an app. So apps within Power BI are fantastic tools to um, distribute uh, information and a really great uh, collaboration hub. So let's just give our app a description. This is prototype. Um, here you can see that we've got our prototype dashboard. We've also got another report here. And we also have the ability to include um, kind of different links as well. So here we've got a video of, um, of our integrated water management project overview. So we can embed that within our content area. We can also embed things like our community feedback form. So I'm going to embed a new link. bringing all this information together is that just that'll make it a lot easier for different people in the organization to understand and get a bigger holistic picture of just looking at the report itself yeah exactly what it does is it really packages up our information and it presents it in a really nice way that people can easily um kind of consume they can unpack explore the data and it just looks pretty good. So that's one thing about developing prototypes. Try to have emphasis on the way things um, look and interact because people will stop picking holes in the design and they'll start exploring the data and it will open up their eyes to the possibilities of other things we can do. So you can see here we're in the app. We can embed things like videos. We've got our community feedback form which we've embedded inside of our app. That's great. Fantastic. And now um, here you can see if we go back to our report, you can navigate it in exactly the same way as we did previously. 
but we've got more functionality here. Can I play with it? Yeah, of course, go ahead. So this is great. So the ability, I guess, to move between and get information from these different districts and then also identify areas to improve in. I can click on something like maybe engagement or engagement needs to be improved and then it will zoom into the different areas across the southern district which have been highlighted. But I think most powerfully for me is the ability to write these comments where I can tell Kira who's interested in, yeah, Kira who's interested and she manages the southern district area to take a look at this. And then so that'll let Kira know that I've been looking at this particular report view. So even if I deselect this filter, it'll create an automatic bookmark and then this bookmark will zoom back into exactly what I was looking at. Yeah, and so it's really great for collaboration um, and making your data visible across the organisation. So let's head back to our PowerPoint. <laughs> No, that's great. So I guess through the Power BI app, I was able to share this um, Power BI report with other departments and that way I can get their input and comments and really help build that shared understanding across the organisation of ways that I want to visualise my data, but then also how we can combine that with other departments and really tell that powerful story and use this tool um, to make informed decisions. That was really good. Yeah, so let's see the finished product. So Christian now has a really good understanding of Power BI He's gone on the journey with us through the prototype development. He's engaged with others across his organization to have a look um, at ways of kind of expanding this. And then let's have a look at what we've come up with. So here we can see our detailed report. Yeah, so we spoke to other people across the departments and were able to build out a little bit more into what we really wanted to see, such as total survey counts in the top right. We've got this gauge here, which is pretty useful for seeing the average satisfaction scores and this little card browser um, image thing at the bottom right to see what our customers view as our main role uh, at Waterworks as the waterways managers. Yeah, it's fantastic. So in this um, presentation, we've really walked through the power of prototypes to help shape your data story. What we've done is we've started with a sketch. So we've tried to capture the key business requirements inside of Power BI and develop our skeleton report. We've then used the subset of our data so we don't get bogged down in the detail or trapped uh, down a couple of rabbit holes uh, trying to calculate really complex things. We've kind of stripped it back. We've then focused on the layout and adding style to our report to align it with our corporate colour themes um, and make it seem like a really familiar report. We've got early feedback which allowed us to dig a bit deeper into the business questions and refine our, um, our prototype before we rolled it out in production. We then shared and collaborated and got, in, got feedback from the wider organisation through distributing it as an app. And so, yeah, as the business owner, just to recap, um, I felt great ownership going along this prototype journey. I was able to expand on my ideas through this staged approach and I built a better understanding of both the workflow of how to create the report, publish it, collaborate, and also Power BI itself as one of the tools where we can build this prototype in. And for me being the analyst, I have a greater appreciation of the requirements. It re significantly reduces my amount of rework. I've also got a shared understanding with Christian and other business users what it is they're trying to display. And it's a much more um, rewarding and engaging experience. So from here, Christian was able to move into production. Yeah, and then we're able to scale it out across the wider organisation with this uh, final product and it's currently being used to make informed uh, data driven decisions across different departments. So we really hope that um, that this kind of concept of prototyping has resonated with other people on the call today. Uh, we know that um, we've only provided examples for Power BI here, but this sort of concept can be applied across lots of different industries. Um, so we really hope that you enjoyed our presentation. And thank you very much to the uh, organisers. We've done an amazing job throughout all of May and also the sponsors. And um, yeah, we really hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it. And thank you, Lisa, for moderating our session. Yeah. And were there any, um, I'm just having a look at the Q&A. So we've got maybe five minutes, Lisa. 
Yeah, sure. So just a couple of questions that have come in there. Thank you. That was really interesting. I'm just going to say I love the bit where you brought the PowerPoint, created a, an image in PowerPoint, brought that across into the background. That is a super cool trick. <laughs> 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 I learned something new there too. So a couple of questions in the thread there. Uh, one quest first question was, uh, do you have a really good template which can be used as a sketch? Yeah, well, I guess um, so we've got some which we use. We haven't made them. Um, we haven't shared them on our blog, but we could share them. One, uh, two places which I would direct you to if you're using Power BI, I'd go to Alluring Analytics. So this is I think this is Chris Hamill's um, blog. He's got lots of uh, PowerPoint templates there that you can download and um, and play with. And um, also powerbi.tips, they've got heaps of really nice layouts um, and backgrounds which can help you develop your sketch. And just from a simple high level, being able to structure, frame, present those different grids, having like your business question and the main part in the top left, just like how you would normally read a book where your attention is drawn first. It just small things like that really help to um, build more, I guess, not even visual design component, but more usability into these reports. Awesome. Now I've posted a alluring analytics in the chat there. What was the second one you, oh, awesome. you mentioned? Powerbi.tips. Powerbi.tips. Is that the URL? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So I I'll think find it's just it. powerbi.tips. All right, I will find that while you answer the next question because awesome. that gives you gives a piece of some links to follow in there. So the other question that came in, how do you update the original Excel spreadsheet with a new one? A new one. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the e there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, but probably the easiest way of doing it is if we go into Power BI and we have a look at our data source settings here. And we wait for it to load up. You can see that this is um, the existing kind of subset uh, Excel file. If I hit change source, um, then we can simply direct it to a new one with um, more information and more data. And as long as that more data is in the same format of how we've developed, prepared this data model here, then it should update the visuals accordingly. And then you get that new data set coming into this sort of template. Yeah, fantastic. So I hope that answered, um, answered your questions. And um, thank you so much for having us, Lisa. Yeah, that's all lot. right. That's it. That's the end of our questions. But there was one comment there which says really good presentation and I learned a lot and I would totally agree with that. So thank you very much. Well done. <laughs> oh, fantastic. And thanks everyone for tuning in. And um, last slide actually oh, yeah. is the sponsors. So thank you to all of the sponsors who make events like M365 happen. Um, it's a really fantastic event to try and bring our community together especially during these times when we're all separated. So um, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you very much. Everyone.